This is the African Campfire Stories podcast. This podcast is dedicated to the telling of African history stories and events. Should you pick up anything we might get wrong, or if you have some suggestions, or if you just want to reach us, please leave us a comment on our website, www.africancampfirestories.com. You can also leave a comment on our social media pages. Search for African Campfire Stories. This podcast is also available on major streaming platforms including Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Player FM. We would like to thank all writers, authors, and academics who write history. This podcast would not exist without their efforts. We are just fans of history, and we rely on the works of these professionals. African History Quickies, Episode 4, State of Indigenous Religions. Just a brief disclaimer before we begin today. We are aware of how sensitive the subject of religion is. We thus do not intend to offend anyone with this episode. On this installment of African History Quickies, we are going to do a quick survey of where indigenous religions stand today. It isn't an easy task to come up with one definition of what an indigenous religion is. Generalizing would imply that there's homogeneity, or sameness among all African cultures. Africa is a big place with huge geographic variation and cultural diversity. Each of the more than 50 countries that make up the continent has its own specific history and each contains many ethnic groups with varied languages, customs and beliefs. Therefore, indigenous religions are also varied and culturally specific. Let the experts define indigenous religion. Open quote. This quote is taken from the Britannica website. It is possible, however, to identify similarities in worldviews and ritual processes across geographic and ethnic boundaries. Generally speaking, African religions hold that there is one creator, one God, and maker of a dynamic universe. Myths of various African peoples relate that after setting the world in motion, the supreme being withdrew and he remains remote from the concerns of human life. According to a myth of the Dinka of South Sudan, God withdrew from the world after the first woman lifted her pestle to pound millet and struck the sky. The story, which is found in many traditions across the continent, explains that although this withdrawal introduced toil, sickness and death, it freed humans from the constraints of God's immediate control. Close quote. Africa has experienced an astronomical increase in numbers of Christians and Muslims, Around the year 1900, most Africans in sub-Saharan Africa practiced some form of indigenous African religion or another. Yet since that time, Christians in Africa have grown from about 7 million to over 450 million today. Islam has experienced a similar rapid growth. Christianity generally dominates in the south. Islam dominates in the north. Each accounts for about 40% of the total population of Africa. Some studies say that 10% of the African population practice indigenous religions. However, one of the complications with such statistics is the fact that they don't account for the Africans who might say write down Christian in any survey form, but yet practice both Christianity and ancestral worship in real life. To further flash out this point... Let's close today's episode with a quote from an expert, Professor Jacob Olupona of the Harvard Divinity School. Open quote. When addressing religion in Africa, scholars often speak of a triple heritage, that is the triple legacy of indigenous religion, Islam and Christianity. They are often found side by side in many African societies. While those who identify as practitioners of traditional African religions are often in the minority, many who identify as Muslims or Christians are involved in traditional religions to one degree or another. Though many Africans have converted to Islam and Christianity, these religions still inform the social, economic and political life in African societies. Close quote. Stay tuned for more of our African History Quickies.